Hi hires, so problem solving. Uh, this is the data handling question from the 2007 past paper, question six. Okay, so first off, and I have said this in the in the PowerPoint about this, but first off, you have to work out the context. Make sure you're absolutely clear on what this is. If you haven't looked at this yet, pause it, read it, and then move on. Okay, our graphs, because the next thing after context is figure out what exactly does your data show. Uh, what I would say in this one, watch out, we have a secondary axis. Our starch is reading to this direction and it's this line. And our sugar content is reading to this axis and it is this line. Okay, so be clear on those ones. And then we also have um, two different lines on the first graph, one for whole seedlings and one for roots only. It would also be worth you just checking that you're okay with the scale. So this is going up in point twos um, on this scale here. So you know that that bit there is, that's going up in 0 0.2, just so you're clear. Now in an exam, your paper is your paper. So if you need to actually put a little line that says this scale is going at point two, just so you remember when you're doing your um, calculations and stuff that's fine okay this one here is going up in fours and this one here is going up in oh, also in fours so this is a describe question these are very common you're asked to use values from graph one to describe the changes in the average dry mass of the seedlings from june to december it is worth two marks. Now a higher two marks is going to be actually a reasonable amount of work. So you're going to have to do some proper work for this. Now it says June to December. So June to December, I am not skipping any part of the graph. If it had said August to December and you'd written in the June and July points, you would lose marks because it's not asked you to go June and July. But in this case, it said June to December. So you have to look at the line that we need to describe and it is this line here. Okay, um, and we need to decide which points you need to give. So you're going to have to give this point. So my June. So starts in June at 3.6 grams. Okay, you then look at it and you go, well, it then rises. So you describe that. Rises to, what are we going up to? 8 grams in October. Okay, then it remains at eight grams in November. And because here we have, I need to describe that point. And finally, and then falls to this point here. Now you, you are expected to be able to work to a half box tolerance. So this is between two lines. There's the half box and you're expected to be able to do that. 7.5 grams in December. It has to be that precise. You're going to have to work quite hard for these ones, as I say. Uh, no missing off of units. If you miss it, then you lose a mark um, and all the data points that you need. So in this case, all of those four. Part two. Between which two months was the greatest increase in average dry mass of the seedlings roots only? So we are looking at this and we are looking at this line, nothing else. Right, I think the easiest thing to do is just to write it down. June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, and then just read them off. I realize that's slightly scribbly. Um, you could just look and work out which one has the biggest increase. That's all you're looking for. Um, but just to be absolutely clear, so at June, we were at 1.8, July, 1.9, August 2, September 2.1, October 2.4, November 2.8, and December 3. So absolutely no question, that's my biggest gap. You could also, as I say, just look for which has the, sh the sharpest line. From graph two, get graph two, 
Calculate the ratio of average starch content to average sugar content. OK, so this is the double axis. Remember, so you're going to have to be careful. Starch content in November. So I'm looking at this point here and this point here. But I'm going to read the starch that way and the sugar this way. So the starch is 20 and the sugar is 140. You are not going to get the mark for that because you're going to have to cancel down. That's your mark. Percentage decrease in average starch content in the needles between June and October. So starch content. So I remember this is just so just this line and only reading this way. Um, I am looking for June starch. So June starch was 60 and October starch was 24. Okay, right. Percentage decrease for any percentage change, whether it's up or down. Okay, then your calculation is percent percentage change is the change divided by the start and then times the whole thing by 100. So my change here is my 24 to 60. I'm plugging it into a calculator so I don't do something stupid in my head. So 36 over my start, which was June, which is 60. And then times that by 100. Actually, that's quite a nice number. So obviously they both divide by 6. Um, so that is 60%. Explain the decrease in average starch content in the needles between June and December. Okay, this seems like quite a random question, but what you have to remember is this is the context. The rate of photosynthesis of the species is at its maximum during spring and then decreases from June to December. So starch, you should know, is the storage carbohydrate made during photosynthesis you make glucose and then you store it as starch and when you're doing less photosynthesis you have to start using up your starch so as photosynthesis goes down you need to start eating away at your starch that's it right so you've never heard of raffinose they're telling you stuff about it raffinose is a sugar that prevents frost damage to needles Statement of fact, you just have gonna, you're going to use that later. The table shows the raffinose content of needles from the seedling samples. So in June, there was none at all. And then as you got through to December, it increased. You're like, OK. What evidence is there that raffinose is not the only sugar present in the needles of Norway spruce? Now, if you just look at this, you have no information. But you do have another graph which told you the average sugar content. So it didn't tell you glucose, didn't tell you raffinose, didn't tell, it said sugar. And it says raffinose is a sugar, one of the sugars. So if you have in June, for example, in June, you look at the sugar, sugar in June, read it this way, is 80 megs per gram. But in June, there is no raffinose, zero megs per gram. And the same is true working through the rest of it. If we take it in December, December has 200 megs per gram of sugar, but there's only 50 grams, megs, sorry, milligrams um, per gram of raffinose. So there must be another 150 megs of other sugars. You pick some data, you back it up. Suggest how the changing raffinose content of needles from June to December December is of survival value to the Norway spruce. Again, you have to just kind of bring stuff together here. So remember this from the start. Evergreen species found in a regions with extremely cold winters, the rate of photosynthesis of the species at its maximum during spring then decreases from June to December. OK. Raffinose is a sugar that prevents frost damage in needles. Extremely cold winters. Look at what's happening to the raffinose. So once it's cold, as it's getting colder, then they are increasing, 
the amount of raffinose that they have inside their needles, which is going to prevent frost damage. And you have to do all of that link to get the mark. You're not going to get it by saying because it gets cold. But you're going to get it if you say because it gets cold as you move into December and the raffinose content is increasing, so preventing frost damage. And that's your whole set. This is the SQB mark scheme. Um, if you're unclear as to why you got marks or didn't get marks, or if you should have, this is what you need to be looking at. You'll notice they are very, very precise about what's going on here. They are very picky about ands. So you've got to give both of these things and this one, uh, you know, this one here. And um, so you have to you have to make sure that you've got the, the right things there. You can be pretty brutal because this is what the SQA is working to. If you're marking to an SQA exam mark scheme and you're not sure if you would get the mark, you just ask me. I obviously have all the mark schemes as well and I will tell you if you should have got them or not. That's that one.